All right, one more lesson from uh, page 1124, and then you're done with this one. This is pages 28 and 29, long division of polynomials. At the very top of page 28, it shows just doing long division with numbers, and it might be good to look at that and remember how we do that back in elementary school. Remember, you would take the outside numbers and uh, divide it into the uh, number under the radical, I mean under the, uh, I always call it the doghouse, under the doghouse, and then you put that number up above. Multiply it, subtract, take the next number, multiply it, put that underneath, subtract, and then you might have a remainder left over. So they show an example of that here on page 28. They show a couple examples here on the page. Uh, let me help you by going through one of these problems um, on your homework. And let's walk through and talk through all of the steps. So one of the very first things we're going to do is, under here we're going to rearrange these terms. Sometimes they have two terms or three terms, four terms, five terms. We're going to put them in descending order of the variable. So this one, the variable is x, so I need to put the 81 x to the fourth first, and I notice that this negative is with this. I could say this is like, 1 plus negative 81 x to the fourth. So this needs to be the first one. And then way out here, I'm going to say plus 1. Now, why do I have a big gap here? Well, I don't have all of the variable. I don't have all the variables descending, like x to the third. I don't have x squared. I don't have plain old x. So I need to leave space to put in plus 0 x to the third, plus 0 x squared, plus x plus 1. 0x, I'm sorry, plus 0x. All right, so these three terms were missing up here. I have the 81, oops, I need to put the negative here, 81x to the fourth, and then here's the plus 1, okay? All of these are zeros. So they're really just placeholders, so that as I divide, I have a column to put them in. Now, I'm going to take these two, I'm going to switch the order because I want to do divided by 3x plus 1. All right, now we're going to take just this term right here and divide by just the 3x. That's all we're going to look at. What is 81 divided by 3? I want to say it's negative 27. Okay, yep. And then x to the fourth divided by x is going to be x to the third. You know what? Let me. Uh, what we like to do is line it up over here. So negative 27x to the third. That way it's over the x to the third. Now we go back and we multiply this times this. So I get negative 81x to the fourth. Negative 27x to the third times 1 is negative 27x to the third. Okay? Here's where most students make their mistake. We are subtracting these. So I always tell students just go through and change all of them to their opposites and then add. That's the easy way to think about it. So we're changing this now to positive, changing this also to a positive. Now I can add and this will cancel out. And that was our whole purpose. We're trying to get that term to cancel. What do we get here? 27x to the third. I'll go ahead and bring down the next term, which is 0x squared. All right, 3x divides into 27x to the third. How many times? Well, 27 divided by 3 is 9, and I'm going to have x squared. Let's check it out. Let's multiply this times this. So 9x squared times 3x is indeed 27x to the third. 9x squared times 1 is 9 x squared. Now we're not done. Remember, we're going to change these to their opposites. This was positive, now it's negative. This was positive, now I'm going to make it negative. Now when I add, this cancels, yay! I bring down the negative 9x squared, bring down the 0x. Let's move a little faster here. 3x into negative 9x squared is negative 3x. Negative 3x times 3x is negative 9x squared. Negative 3x times 1 is negative 3x. Change them to their opposites. 
add. This cancels, okay? Now we bring down the three X and we bring down the one. Oh, <gasps> looky, looky, looky. Three X plus one times one. Multiply one times both of those, subtract. In this case, it looks like we don't even get a remainder. Cool. Sometimes you get to the end and let's say you have the number seven, all right? We don't in this case, but let's say we did. Then you would write that as seven over the divisor three X plus one, all right? That's not the answer, so I'll erase it. We were just showing you what the answer might look like. A remainder would be written over the divisor. I hope that kind of rings a bell. There's a couple of examples you can study, and then there are a few problems to do. Uh, number seven is the only one that has three numbers in the divisor. It looks tricky, but actually you're just gonna look at the x squared and divide that into each successive term. But then when you distribute, when you multiply, you're multiplying at times all three of the terms that are in that divisor, okay? So hopefully uh, you can do well on those eight problems on that page, and then you really are done. You have a review page, you have a checkup, and then we're at the self-test, PACE test, and uh, we'll see you in PACE 5 coming up, right? Yep. 11.25.